Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the second episode of Stitch Success, the journey, style, and business of a Pakistani fashion designer, where we dive into the world of creativity, innovation, and design. I'm your host, Mahabat, and today we have a very special guest joining us. She's a tra trailblazer in the fashion industry, known for her luxurious and opulent designs that seamlessly blend tradition with modernity. Her work has not only set trends, but also redefined the landscape of Pakistani fashion. I'm thrilled to announce to you Shamal Ansari, a celebrated fashion designer whose career spans over three decades. From her early days at the house of Shamal to becoming a name synonymous with elegance and heritage, Shamal has continuously pushed the boundaries of design, incorporating rich cultural motives and innovative craftsmanship in her collections. In this episode, we'll explore her journey in the fashion world, her inspirations behind her iconic designs, and her thoughts on the future of the Pakistani industry and beyond. Whether you're a fashion enthusiast, an inspiring designer, or someone who appreciates the art of storytelling through fabric, this conversation is one you don't want to miss. So let's dive in. Thank you so much, Shamal, for joining us for the celebration of Heritage Week 2024. Heritage Week celebrates Pakistan's rich culture and traditions, and as we all know, fashion is a huge part of the country's heritage and history. On behalf of the American Pakistan Foundation, we thank you for joining us in Heritage Week, where we honor this culture on Pakistan's 77th Independence Day, as well as APF's 15th anniversary. To start off, could you please give us an overview of your journey into fashion design? Hello, good to meet you. And uh, I'm definitely here to, to speak about the industry and how I developed it. And uh, to, to begin with, I will tell you that my education was in the United States. Uh, I, gradu I studied at Mills and at Berkeley. So at Berkeley University is where I graduated. And I studied finance and corporate law. And I come from a family that was a very big uh, business family called the Hysons. And so I was 20 years age where I graduated. And uh, so it was all knowing how business should be run. And uh, But then I think it is very important to know that what is your passion in life? What is something that, that people are very interested in? So I was always interested in going a lot to museums and a lot of historical aspects that was a passion of mine to actually read, to, to travel and to see the historical aspects of Egypt, to see the beautiful historical aspects of Mughal, to see the Ottoman aspects. So I kept looking at how the queens dressed and I kept looking at what was their lives and what was the history. So I, I would go to a lot of museums and, and I would spend a lot of time in London also. And I would sit there and I would actually go to museums and, and learn what, what people wear and how people do, what are their colors, what is their countries in those old times. So that was a passion that I really, really liked. And uh, somebody asked me to then do a huge, big charity event. And so I just did about like, Six outfits and uh, you know uh, people loved it in London and so I came and in 1987 I started my business which was the Shamai luxury brand so that was 1987 I was one of the pioneers in Pakistan of designing and what I started designing was actually something totally different that I have uh, that I have designed from other designers so it is also something that I put in a lot of beautiful aspects of how prints are to be done. They are very different from anybody, any other designers. The Shamail brand prints are totally different. The digital work is totally different. And of course, hand embroideries. So I started all that with different cuts and different aspects. And so I was really the on, uh, only one. And even today in Pakistan, I am the only designer who basically has done the maximum number of fashion shows internationally and in Pakistan. 
worked a lot with charity organizations like Kidney Center, SIUT, uh, with uh, um, T TCF, uh, with lots of companies, and also Hunar Foundation now. So the thing is that, uh, and I did a lot of other fashion shows also, and uh, for me to have developed in so many years, uh, I also started training people. So when I trained people and everything, uh, I also we opened the uh, FPL. is It's a it's a company that we opened in Karachi for uh, the fashion institute and and to make a lot of fashion shows happen. And I became the chairman of fashion show. So I was the chairman for three years. And uh, so knowing actually studying. Uh, finance and everything in my graduation and everything is something that that one becomes. Shamail was somebody that I am who is in creativity, who is in business and who knows how to operate financially in business. So for 37 years, the business has has been still alive and very, very well high end. And, uh, and we do a lot of stuff that, that is high end for weddings. We do stuff that is luxury and we do stuff that is also very very reasonable they start at 16000 pkr onwards you know so cheap stuff also that is very good to wear western stuff and i am the only one in pakistan who has worked with also international companies like a uh, walmart like uh, like uh, uh, you know uh, a lot of companies in in the united states like you know uh, a lot of designing that I did for companies and a lot of production I did for exports also. So uh, so that is something that I have been in business for a very, very long time. And, uh, and creativity is something that is required. So anybody who designs is something where creativity has to be taught to them. And uh, that is what I did for years. And for 37 years now, my business is one of the oldest and the and the happiest and the strongest business in Pakistan. And also we work internationally. Thank you so much for walking us through the history of Shamal and Sari, how you started your business and build it up. Um, it's strong foundation to where it is now. Um, I, I was intrigued by the fact that you said that your prints and designs and embroideries are quite different from everything else in the industry. Um, can you walk us through what aspect of your brand differentiates you from other Pakistani designers? Yes, I can. Uh, and uh, and the thing is that basically, as I said, that, that uh, uh, basically the prints that I do in uh, um, in Pakistan is something that is totally different, and um, and uh, so so how are things totally different? Is basically it is something that you see that is totally independent, and that that is totally something that you you check out and you say, hey, this is done, but I will do something different. So the thing is that is how I have trained my team. And, and it is not just researching and saying, hey, that's what I grab in. No, it is something that you create. You create with color, you create with sizes, you create with an aspect. So, um, so that is how we basically do designs that are completely different. And even embroideries, these are all trained by teams. So, um, so these are things that basically the designers you know, should be training, and that is what I have done. So it is something totally different. All right, thank you so much. And now that we're actually talking about history, how have your designs changed since the beginning of your career? And now, obviously, the trends are different. So can you tell us a little bit more about, like, your vision in the beginning to what it is now? Yes, I can. Uh, the thing is that that uh, that you must know in life that world changes all the time, and uh, and if it's thirty seven year old business, then you have somebody taking something right at the beginning, and then people are much older, and their children have grown up, right? So the thing is that mm -hmm. when children grown up, their their likes and what they want is something different. So it's always to actually monitor. That, that, okay, these are traditional aspects that one makes. Traditional aspects, but to be completely something that is the Shamail design. And that is something that people like, traditional stuff. 
you know, in, whether it's international, whether it's, it's Pakistan, people like traditional aspects. Then after that, you have to see how the world is today. And people travel, young people study outside, they live outside, they come, they want to wear stuff that is basically, hey, I want something and I keep it forever and not wear it. That's not correct. It is something that you do do now that you wear all the time. And how do you change it? If you have a kurta, then how do you change with the pants? How do you change with the dupatta? How do you change stuff that are different aspects that you can change a little? Uh, and they come to us, they say that, hey, I like this shirt. And we change the pants, we change the, the jackets and stuff like that. So it's something that you can keep on going. And it has to be something that, hey, you know, I this is not good. No, it is something that can be kept forever. Yet different aspects and, and things that you can wear all the time for your life. Yet modern stuff, yet stuff that you can travel abroad in, Western stuff as well. So it is something that you have to see what the world changes. And that's how you design. Right. So versatility, you would say, is a huge aspect of your brand. Um, thank you. Absolutely. All the time. All the time. Right. So versatility and endurance is something you can wear daily, but is never out of style. You can wear it to the airport, to work, um, basically um, a lot of different places. It's not something that's always um, in your cupboard, only out for a special occasion. But Shamal, so you mentioned a Shamal design. How how would you describe a typical Shamal design? Or is it something that varies depending upon the type of collection it is? Well, it all depends. It all depends if it's historical aspect, but it does not look historical, right? Mm -hmm. It is something that you see, that you make, you take the historical ideas, you take the historical colors, but you change it into aspects of today. So that is something that we do do. And there are various names that we keep in, in the collections. Uh, it's not just one. And, and today we do stuff that people can wear daily as well. That are, that are cheap, like, you know, whether it's in, in, in cotton in, and it's uh, something we call the Shamail Essentials of Shamail. And if you see in our website, Essentials of Shamail, you will see that they look kind of Western, they look kind of very good, yet they, they're casually wearable also. And they're wearable for any time, anywhere. You can even wear it casually. You can wear it to go out somewhere. You can wear it to travel. So that's how it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you so much for explaining. Now, zooming out a little bit on the industry itself, what would you say is your favorite part about being a fashion designer in the Pakistani industry specifically? I know you mentioned you went to school abroad, you had experience in business, you worked with different industries um, abroad in the U.S. So what aspect of the Pakistani fashion industry intrigues you the most? Well, um, I, I think that, you know, uh, it is basically, it's not just Pakistan, but internationally, people like things to wear on events. And clothes is something that is a big industry everywhere internationally. And it is perhaps bigger internationally. So I have had experiences and I do internationally as well. So the thing is that, that, uh, that in Pakistan, it is required because also we have events in Pakistan as well. We have, you know, things that, that we have Eid areas, right? So we, we actually do celebrate in Eid and, and mm -hmm. we do celebrate in weddings. We do celebrate at dinners. We do celebrate on events. So Pakistan, Alhamdulillah, has, has all these aspects where people entertain themselves and they have good times of entertaining themselves and family and friends. Exactly. So, you know, just as we're celebrating Heritage Week at the American Pakistan Foundation, Pakistan itself has a lot of different specific events and celebrations. We have Eid, we have Independence Day, we have different holidays. So I think that just adds to the um, the fun of being a fashion designer in the industry. Now, talking yes. about trends, what do you think is a trend in the a current trend in the Pakistani fashion industry that you like a lot these days? Well, these days, I think it's something that we do a lot that kind of, as I told you, if you really look at the Shamail Essentials, 
that is something that you will see. And of course, the heavy ones, uh, you know, they're also totally different. And uh, uh, so, you know, so what has to be in designs is anything that is affordable in today's times for anybody. And yet it looks different. So people feel that, hey, I like this aspect. I can afford it, very wearable. So that is something that I feel really works in, in today's times. It does. Although things like wedding and Eid, it keeps following every year. Yes, exactly. And I think even on the customers and um, things you can wear daily as opposed to ones that you wear only on a special occasion, um, it's it's more convenient for customers as well. Now, you mentioned yeah. your essentials collection. And these days we see a lot of, you know, daily wear. We see collections called Rosanna, which is basically things you can wear um, on the go everywhere. Um, these are somewhat inspired by Western fashion in the sense that we see cohort sets, um, typical Pakistani um, clothes have a lot of embroidery, a lot of prints, but now we see um, cohort sets, which are um, one or maybe monochrome colors, maybe two or three colors, but shorter shirts and a bit more inspired by Western fashion. So on the contrary, do you think Western fashion is being influenced by Eastern fashion in any way more than before? Well, I, I really need to tell you that that when you see the essentials of Shamayal, you will not see it as completely. Yes, there are aspects of Western in it. But it should never be, we do do Western, but we do it like, you no know, for raw like that totally western but when you see the essentials it's a little combination thing that you can wear as i said you can wear here you can wear internationally you can wear anywhere so they're different they're very original and that's what people love these days they say hey i can wear this anywhere it looks a little bit of western but it's totally different mm -hmm. right so, so it's individuality just... that people like which is affordable, good prices, and individuality. Exactly. And I, I, I see that you mentioned you have a completely different Western collection as well, as do most brands. So even if um, a certain collection is inspired or has somewhat of an aspect of um, Western fashion, it's you still have a separate line of ex, um, exclusive Western clothing. Um, but would you still say there's um, more influence of Western fashion in your clothing more than before and vice versa? Well, uh, you see, the thing is, people. Uh, it's. Uh, I, I would not say it's because of Western. I would say it's because of things being totally individual and totally different that people say, hey, if I buy the Shama, I think I'm looking different. It's something that I feel that it's totally different. That is what people like. So Western is different, but a combination of Western to something totally different and be individual is what is the Shamail brand. That is the Shamail brand. Thank you. That's a, that's a very interesting and unique vision. Um, now, looking at the future, how do you see the fashion industry changing in the next five years? You know, we talked about the past 37 years of work and history and how it changes, you know, with each decade, with each year. So what do you vision, uh, envision coming up in the next five years? In the next five years, I mean, I really feel that we have stuff that is very affordable, that the prices are good. That is what is going to be required. And, uh, you know, and you have to keep monitoring as what, uh, you know, what people care, like. I mean, we are, we do have ready to wear all the time, but we also have a lot of ordering for people, right? So the, what is the ordering for people is personal meetings with customers. So personal meetings with customers, it, what is that? How do they look? What do they like? And what is it, the aspect that they want today? That is what teaches all the companies. Right. Thank you so much. And again, like I said, in, in today's economy, being affordable is more important now than ever. Now, yes. um, shifting a little bit from the fashion aspect to you mentioned studying business, I would love to learn what strategies have you found affecting in growing your very successful business? 
Well, the thing is that you see, to to actually know how to run a business is something that you need to know. How do you study about it, right? I mean, there are companies in which they are designers with their brand names uh, are on their designs, but they do do not know so much about how to handle business and how to handle financially. Uh, so I have not had a lot of people have their husbands looking over it, their brothers looking over the business, you know, their partners looking over the business. But the Shamail brand from 1987 has been the only one for 37 years. And even my uh, business, which I, I did do, uh, which was, you know, uh, which was actually export business. And, um, and uh, that also was something that I have for 37 years and even now operated only myself as the head of, of it. And that is when you actually study well in, you know, in certain, you know, university and you learn how to operate business, then you don't need partners. So the thing is that having graduated from University of Berkeley, which is a huge, big, big, uh, you know, university, and you learn finance over there and stuff like that. So over here, what does the brand do? It has elements of looking after stuff in what are the, the, the rules of it? What is financial aspect? What is production aspect? What is different, different aspects, you know, design aspects? What is basically marketing aspects? What is really various aspects of production, of, of purchase, of, uh, um, um, you know, a uh, lot, of, lot of things, uh, and, and sales aspects, you know, and uh, advertising aspects and everything. Now, these are all things that business-wise, you know, one has to know. And 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 you have to have, have, you know, have monitoring on systems. You need systems to know how it is being done, right? So I have, mm -hmm. I, I used to monitor everything myself, myself, myself. I have CEO now and I have... Uh, monitoring i have audit and everything but the thing is that it is something that i have done originally myself as the owner of the business brand because i came from a family that is a business oriented family so our whole family had business in their mind like you know this is my grandfather my mother herself was a very business person so it's something that i already knew how to operate you know individually so um so shamail brand is something that is not with partners and this that and everything I'm alhamdulillah, I'm pretty good at doing business myself. Amazing, mashallah, and your business, your business actually shows your expertise. Um, so moving on, you must have had a lot of interesting experiences in your business, growing it, working with, um, you know, international organizations and industries. Um, can you share any specific? experiences or lessons learned that you think are vital that help shape you as a business owner? Well, uh, I would really think that that needs something that is education, you know. It is education mm -hmm. and it is actually when you are in business and I just mentioned to you there are so many aspects in, mm -hmm. in, in, in this industry. So you need people who's good with marketing, who's good with, with finance aspects, who's good with various aspects of production, who's good with systems developing, who's good with designing, who's good with sales aspects, who's good with all kinds of things, you know. Uh, so so you, so everybody needs to go into, into learning what they want to be in. And if you want to be a total business person, then you need knowledge and people need education properly. And the biggest aspect aspect is actually also finance aspect also legal aspects that you need to know everything so the thing is that a person who does individually a business has to have experience has to have education and that's how they they operate so right you hit it right off the ballpark experience and education about every aspect of a business is vital in um, building a strong foundation you would say yeah, and people who educate well from good universities and everything, they are like people who've studied with me in Berkeley, you know, whether they're Pakistanis, whether they're they're from various other countries, they all are business people today. 
and uh, they don't have partners and they're big, big business people. And, uh, and I was awarded uh, this year by the United States, you know, as a person who does business and the way she operates and stuff like that, I was awarded this year. And uh, so the thing is that, that those are the people who really operate well, you know, and they know everything. And, uh, and, and people who just design, that's a different aspect. And who have partners and everything, they are people who, people who are not so educated in it and not so much experience. Then they are the ones who can uh, and become a business person. They, prob they normally invest in things. But to run the business and to be the owner of the business individually is something where you really need good experience and you need good education. Exactly. So not only any kind of education, quality education is what you would say is important. Now, it is this, important. This brings me to my very last um, question, which is what message or advice would you have for young designers um, and aspiring female entrepreneurs in the fashion world? Yeah, it, it, so basically, if they really, you know, uh, I mean, I was lucky that I had passion, my own passion, as I said first, in terms of antiquity, in terms of design, in terms of colors, uh, you know, in terms of beautiful textiles. So that was my passion. But my education was also there. So now for designers, they need to concentrate only in designing. And uh, I used to operate a lot in being uh, in, in studying how and seeing and and uh, actually going to, to a lot of colleges here and seeing and giving them rates on how they've operated and all as designers. So today in Pakistan, we have three, four companies that, uh, you know, uh, a lot of schools that have opened up for designing. So people need to be in schools and universities for designing to learn how aspects are. And that means research also. So they do research, they study all that, and then they come and they, they should be with the company and the company teaches them how to develop their products. So it's getting the essential quality education in school and then... Yeah, and, and I, 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 I'm, yeah, and I'm basically a trainer also. So I do uh, uh, train, uh, you know, um, I have been training some poor girls and at Hunar Foundation so that they get good jobs. But people who come to my office to be trained, then uh, they, they pay me and I have trained people also. Amazing. So um, starting off with a strong foundation with quality education and then training is like um, the icing on the cake. So good training also leads you far ahead in the industry than just having normal education going. Absolutely. Experience right. is, is required. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, um, Shamail, for your time, for all of your insights into the fashion industry. We learned a lot about not only your brand, but the industry, its trends, what differentiates you, and a lot of um, really good advice for young entrepreneurs and fashion designers. We really thank you for your time and best of luck for your future endeavors. And I'm very happy for you to actually share our number. And when people want to be trained and everything and to be taught, I am there to do that for them so they can contact us. We will. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah.